everyone is talking about AI and as a developer, you don't wanna be left behind. So let's look at the easiest way that you can include AI features like ChatGPT directly inside of your Next.js application. I am crazy super excited about AI and ChatGPT. I use it almost every single day to help me get inspiration for things. And the cool thing is as developers, you have easy access to incorporate AI features into your application if you know the basics of how to put that together. So in this video, I'm gonna show you to use AI inside of a Next.js application, just like I did in this demo, where it calls to a backend and uses AI to generate meme text for these images focused on JavaScript. Uh, so you can see this is coming through with a couple of different uh, examples of text. This is using AI behind the scenes with API endpoints inside of a Next.js project to generate this text, which I think is pretty cool. And that's the easiest way that I found to do this and the power is basically infinite after that point. Like after you integrate with OpenAI SDK, you can basically build anything on top of that that you want. So the thing that you will need to do is have an account with OpenAI or ChatGPT, a developer uh, account. And so the link that I'm on already logged in is platform.openai.com. And inside of here, you can see a lot about their documentation. And then most importantly, what you'll need is an API key. So for this demo, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new API key for this test, and we'll just call this uh, Next.js test. We'll create the API key. I'm gonna copy that to my clipboard and we will use this in a second. So uh, inside of the code, I've got a brand new Next.js project. Let me kill the existing project that I was running, uh, and this will be npm run dev. So we'll go ahead and get this up, and I won't change anything on the UI side. We'll work on the back end of this that actually integrates with OpenAI SDK or API SDK. And then I'll kind of show you how I put this together in that meme generator app. But here is the very uh, beginning of a Next.js project. Now I have the hello world API endpoint. So this is at uh, hello or API slash hello, just to show that this works. This just returns dummy data to us, which is kind of exactly what we're looking for at this point. All right, so the one thing we'll need in here is an environment variable file. So we'll do a dot env file and then we'll do open AI API key and then paste in that key. So that's what we're gonna use inside of uh, our configuration for the OpenAI SDK. So let's just do a quick search for that, OpenAI SDK NPM, just so you can see what this looks like. So you can go and search OpenAI and they'll show you basically exactly what we're gonna do. So we can actually just kind of copy this. And I like to put um, any kind of like setup or configuration for uh, SDKs inside of their own like utils file. So I'm gonna create a utils directory and then inside of here, I will create uh, the openai.ts and then we can paste this in. So from the openai here, we're going to uh, get the configuration object and the openai API object that we'll use to configure this thing. It's going to go ahead and reference that process.env.openai API key. And then uh, lastly, we will be able to export default open AI. Now I, I do this all the time. This is so that we can now reference this uh, configured object anywhere in our application by importing it from here and not have to reconfigure that thing every time. So I think that is the way to go. Now, as we get into the API endpoint, basically what we're going to do here is we're going to look to receive some user data, ask chat GPT to generate something and return to the user. Now in this case, we'll kind of follow this meme idea where we're gonna send it a picture. We'll talk more about that in a second. And then ask ChatGPT to generate the actual text for us for the meme. Uh, cool, so that will work. Uh, the one thing I wanna reference in here also is this video is heavily influenced uh, from videos from Colby Fayok. He's got an amazing YouTube channel, does a lot with AI and Next.js and a lot of different things. So here's one that he did uh, with creating custom Pokemon cards in Next.js using OpenAI and uh, Dolly, so it actually generates like the images. I wonder if I can get an example of this that he did. It's like really, really cool. Let me get to one freeze frame. So here's like a Pokemon image that was generated and he created like a full card around this. It's just like super sick stuff. So you should check that out. And then he also just released a video on uh, doing a similar thing using ChatGPT to generate uh, a quiz uh, question for Star Wars, which is really cool. So we're basically gonna follow kind of this uh, this prompt here. So 
let's go ahead and come over to the API endpoint. And inside of here, if we just kind of paste this in, uh, we'll need to import the open AI. So I can do command on a uh, Mac and period. And it gives me uh, my IntelliSense options up here. And then lastly, uh, we'll make this an async function. So this should actually uh, should actually work to be able to integrate with OpenAI right now as is. Now let's say, let's ask it a question. Maybe for example, like what is two plus two? This is very simple. We'll get to something more uh, relevant in a second. And let's just return back the completion so we can actually look at what this, uh, what this data looks like. So again, we have our configured OpenAI object. We have the API key that's in our environment variables. We're now referencing that OpenAI uh, configured object that we can call create com completion on. And we're using in here the model uh, by default of text DaVinci 003. I'm gonna update this to be, uh, well, actually we can leave this for a second and then we'll tweak this and kind of see what happens. Uh, we may need to restart this because we changed environment variables. So let's get that up and running. I think that is good. And let's go over to our local host again. And do we get back a response? No, we did not. So, oh, we actually have to install the package. This is silly. Uh, open AI, anyone else like start doing stuff and just assume it's already been done and then take it for granted and realize you never even installed the package, even though we talked about it, we went out of our way, uh, but we completely forgot. So. Uh, let's try this again. If we refresh on this page, we get back uh, what looks like an HTML document. And I think that's coming from like an error of formatting in here. I think this is just basically the way the completion object is uh, is handled. So let's go and actually copy this. So from let's get the response. Let's say const response equals and then we'll go here. So from this completion object that gets returned, we want the data, then we want the choices, and then we want the text uh, that actually that we actually care about. Uh, and then we can say, uh, we can just say res in here. So that should work. What's wrong with that from data object? Oh, that's because we have two defined. So we can call this response text, whatever, and response text, okay. And as any good TypeScript, developer or terrible TypeScript developer does. This is defining a return type up here. It's just kind of stubbed out. We're just gonna say this is a response of any so that we can move along. This is not a TypeScript demo. This is just kind of showing you how this AI piece uh, works. So let's refresh this again. Hopefully we'll get something back. And it says the response text is two plus two equals four. Great, very simple, not, not at all what we're actually trying to do. So let's take this a little uh, step further. So let's uh, let's change the method that we're calling. Let's call the comp uh, create chat completion function, and this is going to look a little different. Uh, but the the model that we're going to use is GPT dash three point five dash turbo. Make sure I got that right. So GPT dash three point five dash turbo, and then the way the chat completion works is we have to send a messages array. And then inside of here, it's an object where we define who is basically asking the question. So in this case, the role is the user and then the content is going to be uh, the question that we want to ask. So we could start with something uh, like, can you generate text for a meme related to JavaScript? Now, the thing we're not doing is actually sending in an image to contextually send response back to. So we'll talk about this in a second of how I get around that because you can't send it images to uh, kind of infer. So we'll get around that in a second. But now we're just saying like, can you give us text uh, for a meme? And we'll kind of iterate on this through a few different times to get exactly the type of data that we're looking for. And we'll need to update the end of this. So how we actually access the data coming back to us. This will come from the first choice and then this will be the message dot content. That should give us back uh, what we're looking for. So let's come in here and see if we get some text. All right, and it says, how about this? When you finally understand JavaScript and then ES6 comes, picture of a confused person, caption just when you thought you had it all figured out. So that actually does a pretty good job contextually. And it's actually interesting because it now references what the picture would be. So now you could go and choose a picture. We could actually reverse engineer this and say like, hey, tell me what type of picture you're looking for and then go and query somewhere based on a picture like that. That would be interesting. 
But here's one thing we can do. Let's say we add additional context to this. So let's say um, for an image of a confused person holding their hand out. So we're now giving context, even though we're not passing ChatGPT an image, we're actually passing like basically alt text for an image. And now it can have context of what the image is and generate text based on that. So if we now, let's make this like much bigger, easier to see. If we now do this, and it says when you try to understand JavaScript, end up feeling like you're trying to catch water with your bare hands. So this is perfect because it hits the two things of confusion and it's referencing like the handout part. So if you have images already that you want to work with, and that's what I have like in the JQQ memes project, the AI version of, the, of this is not deployed. That was just running locally. But in the meme generator, I have a series of different images. So if I refresh the image, here's all the different images that I could use. And so what I can do is actually add alt text to each one of those and be able to pass that context to Jet chat GPT. And now it has the ability to do the full thing. So let's add a little bit more context. Like let's say we wanted a top piece of text and a bottom piece of text and just kind of format this in a way that we can use it. So let's say the meme should have two pieces of text, one on the top and one on the bottom. And uh, each piece of text should be less than 25 characters uh, long. Lastly, can you format the response as JSON with two properties with the two properties named top text and bottom text. So in this case, what we're asking it is, hey, here's all the context you need to generate the data, but also can you format it in a way that now I can reference it in JavaScript? So let's go back, refresh this. Let's see if we get uh, this in here. So you see we have what looks like a stringified version of a JSON object. So we have top text, what is, and then bottom text of JavaScript, clean and simple. So then lastly, we could, uh, we could actually parse this. So let's say uh, response object equals json.parse. And then we'll parse the response text. And then we will uh, just return this object directly, response object. And now we should be able to see an actual JSON object in here with those two properties of top text and bottom text, where semicolon, <laughs> nice. Uh, so that is really cool. So now not only are we able to integrate with ChatGPT, we're able to take our questions to a different level, and make it specifically like developer focused so that it can return to me JSON and I can go and work with this. Now, what I did inside of the meme generator code, where did we take that? I think I moved it to the other screen, is almost exactly what you just saw. So inside of here, we make a request to the back end. And what we do on the back end is pass it the ID of the image that we're looking at. And that ID is referring to an image inside of Cloudinary. So inside of my Cloudinary dashboard, I've got a video on how I did this as well, if you're more interested in specific details. But inside of Cloudinary, for each one of the images that I uploaded, let's click on one. Where is one of those images? Here's one, fun one. For each one of these images, let's go into the image itself and the metadata. You can see I added an alt piece of text in here. So man with confused look and one eye closed. Again, now, when inside of this code, the meme generator, we can grab a reference to that image from the ID inside of Cloudinary, grab the alt text, and then what we do is the same thing we just did, but we pass in that alt text. This gives ChatGPT or OpenAI the context to create the meme specifically for that type of image. You can see we then parse that in the JSON, pass that back to the front end, and then all we do on the front end is make a fetch request to the back end to do that. So under the uh, handle generate text with AI. We make a fetch request to our back end. We pass in the ID of that image. We get back the text and then we set those two properties in state and react for the top text and the bottom text. Super, super cool. And the, the, the ability to create stuff is infiniteless or infiniteless is infinite. The power to build things on top of AI is incredible. And all you really have to do is create that back end function that can integrate with it. And then you can customize the questions, the responses, Display that on the screen however you want. But the easiest way I found to do this in Next.js is to do this with a basic API endpoint and you get to customize all the things about this that you want to. 
So I hope you're excited about this. If you have other like cool use cases that you would like to see a demo on with uh, using OpenAI, let me know in the comments below because this is stuff that I'm like really, really over the moon excited about. Can't wait to do more content on it. So let me know what you think. Hope you enjoy the video and I'll catch you next time.